All right, well, here we are in the kitchen, and I am getting ready to bake a golden cake, um, a, a jeweled golden cake. And this is, you know, just something I'm kind of making up here. Golden State Warriors have chance of moving on in series tonight if they win. When they win, I got my blue and gold on. Blue, gold, blue, gold. We're going to go see them play tonight. And I'm baking this cake, so first things first, I'm going to take off my rings and I'm going to put on my apron. Every good cook wears an apron. You have to wear an apron. Else I'd be messing up all my clothes. It's like, it never fails. Like, whenever I don't put on an apron, that's when I splash oil all over the front of something. And then it's ruined. So, better safe than sorry. So what I'm going to use, this is, this is, this is, this is like a healthy cake. <laughs> um, I got these uh, pre-made uh, squash, summer squash noodles. I've been using this, this uh, service called Instacart. It's an app and you know, they, have a whole bunch of, they have a whole bunch of stores that you can shop from and then it gets delivered. And then, you know, you can even tip the delivery person and it's been pretty, it's been pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. So I got these and I'm not going to use all of them. I'm probably going to use, I'm gonna be, probably use about half of this for the cake and then the other half I will make some lunch with. Um, a nice generous handful. And if, if you don't have, I mean, this, these are really just, you know, I shouldn't put the noodles in first. I, sh I need to do the other wet things first. Good thing I'm thinking about this. But hey, I, I got too excited. So before we get there, I, I have to put in the other wet ingredients. And got my oven preheating to 350. And this recipe is going to take two eggs. Put things away. I like to do the eggs first in the bowl. That way, if for some reason the egg isn't isn't good, there's something wrong with the egg, um, I can dump it out. Like, yeah. This one, this one looks like it was a fertilized egg. I don't generally like to use fertilized eggs, but it didn't look like it was too far along there. How do you know it's fertilized? Well, it'll have a couple little red dots in it. What are those little red dots? That's the baby chicken starting. Because the yolk is not, the yolk does not become the chicken. The yolk is what the chicken eats, or it's, the, it's like the center of the egg. It's kind of like, it's the amniotic sac. I like to take out the chalaza of my eggs. The chalaza is the, is the little is the little like membrane on either side, and it, it helps to uh, keep the yolk centered inside the inside the the white of the egg, and it also is kind of like like an umbilical cord kind of thing. I like to remove them because I can always feel them in texture of things, and I don't like that. I'm a sensitive person. All right, so we got two eggs, and now I need one cup of sugar, which, you know, for a cake isn't that bad. My cup doesn't fit in there. I keep my sugar in this plastic container. And bar I think we got barley in this container one time when Omar was making beer. One time he was brewing some beer. The barley came in this. So one cup of sugar. I like because it it's airtight. Keeps the sugar fresh. I never find little weevils in my sugar. Nobody likes weevils in their sugar. Um, now it calls for half a cup. This recipe calls for half a cup of cooking oil, but I'm going to cut that in half to a quarter cup because I, instead of using, instead of, it also call, calls for a couple tablespoons of milk. And instead of milk, and instead of the full amount of fat, I'm going to use cottage cheese. And 
that's going to give us a, a little creamier texture and add to the body of the cake. Um, it also has some fat content, you know. So I got these, I got these, this little thing, these little good culture. This is really good cottage cheese. And I, just, I like cottage cheese a whole lot. And as a lacto-ovo-vegetarian, it's a really good option for me because it's high in, it's high in protein. Um, so this is, a, this is, this is a good thing. This is a good thing for vegetarians. Good thing for me. Um, and it also has probiotics, has probiotics in it. So it's really good for you. It's really, really good for you. And you know, yesterday Omar and I went out. I'm going to put almost the entire contents of this in there. I'm going to leave like, and this is, this is probably like a third of a cup. I'm leaving out about a, a teaspoon for me to eat. Mmm. Yep, it's in good shape. Um, but it's good for you. It's good for you. So, I'm going to mix up these wet ingredients. to plug my mixer in. I have to go over there. You have to look at my back. My giant bottle of olive oil. I think olive oil is probably the fat I use most of. Kind of see me. Well, the lighting's not so great over here. Maybe if I close the blinds. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah. There you go. I got that all mixed together. Now I'm going to add in. Um, I'm going to add in my, my summer squash noodles. And if you don't, if you if you can't get these already made into noodles at the store, I mean, you just get a couple squashes, little squashes, and you grate them with your cheese grater. And I put in about, I don't know, it's probably about a cup, cup and a half. Um, a couple handfuls. those through. All right, next thing to go in to our cake, I need my, oh, I'm going to add in some of my other spices. All right. So I have some uh, orange zest. You could use lemon zest too if you had some. I don't have any lemon zest right now, uh, so, but I'm going to use orange zest and it's kind of golden in color and it smells nice and we'll add a nice, um, it's like, I don't know, I'd say like maybe a, not even a quarter of a teaspoon, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. Because I mean, this is this is quite a strong seasoning. I also have some uh, orange blossom water in there. And some, I have some rose water, maybe I'll add the rose water, that'll be nice. And uh, just a touch of vanilla. And I always use real vanilla. I don't like the way fake vanilla tastes. And then I have cardamom bitters. I'm just putting a, a few drops of that. Cardamom is, is really a strong flavor as well. Yeah, we'll leave out the rose water this time. Now, I need my baking soda, baking powder, and salt and flour. Two 
cups of flour. I'm using organic, all-purpose, unbleached white flour from Bob's Red Mill. And two cups of flour. I always use organic, try to always use organic uh, flours and grains just because I don't want the pesticides. So I'm actually going to need to add some liquid of some kind. And maybe that this will be a good time to add some rose water. Let's see here. I'm going to use rose water over the orange blossom water because the rose water is not... The, the, orange, the orange blossom water is extremely potent. A very little bit of that goes a very, very, very long way. It's very, very potent. The rose water, it's a little bit harder to overdo. I'm putting just like a capful. I'm going to need more liquid than that though. And in my refrigerator I have, I have a white wine. I've ordered, one of the things that you can order is, is alcohol from BevMo. Now I don't normally shop at BevMo. I've only actually been in a BevMo store maybe twice in my whole life. But you know, it was one of the places you could order from. I never tried this. I was looking on there and I don't think I'm going to order um, delivery from BevMo again, just because I, I'm, I'm very picky about my wine, and and I actually, I really prefer going to a tasting room to purchase wine, and then when I see it in the store, I'll purchase it, because I get to, I like to, I get to know a label and a varietal, so I was looking for a specific varietal, I was looking for Chenin Blanc or Viognier, and when I did my search on there, this came up, and it's a Chenin Blanc Viognier white blend. Now, Chenin Blanc is, is, not a super dry, but it's not, it's not usually, whenever I've had it, it's not a, it's not a real syrupy sweet. And the same thing with Viognier. So, I don't know, I, I couldn't even drink a whole glass of this. It was far too sweet for me. Pine Ridge, Chenin Blanc and Viognier. Um, but the palate of it wasn't bad. It was just not what I look for in, in wine when I want to have a glass of wine. It didn't, it didn't match. But I'd never had this before, so it's nobody's fault. Um, but, but it'll be good for baking. It'll be good for baking, so I'm going to add a little bit of that to this as well. And that will help thin down the batter a bit. That was probably about two tablespoons, two, three tablespoons of wine. And a cap full of the rose water. because it's, it's it's just the texture of those of the of the noodles of the of the squash noodles. So now I have to put in my salt and what have I got here? A teaspoon of baking soda. A teaspoon of baking soda. Soda of the baking. Is this a teaspoon? One teaspoon. A teaspoon of baking soda. You know, baking really is it is chemistry. This is kitchen chemistry. Teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of baking powder. Now I'm not just 100% sure just what all the difference is between baking soda and baking powder. I mean, they're both sodium, forms of sodium. This has calcium in it as well. Cornstarch, sodium bicarbonate, sodium aluminum sulfate, monocalcium phosphate. So. And baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. So this is this is one thing. This is multiple things. And then I need half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm using Himalayan pink Himalayan salt. It's what I always almost always use. I really like it. And I'll mix all that through. I wish I had some blueberries to throw in here. That would like really, you know what? I think I do have some blueberries. 
because these are juicy. Juicy. So it truly is gonna be a warrior's cake. A jeweled golden warrior's cake. Mmm. Those are good. So I have my, my, my blueberries I'm gonna put in here now, and I also have my dried fruits. Of the dried fruits, I have apricots and barberries. Barberries are similar to currants or raisins. They're just a little, they're a little more tart, and they come from the barberry bush, and evidently, they're common in Turkish cuisine. I saw them. I found them at, at the spice shop, Oaktown Spice Shop. So, I'm going to add in my dried fruits, and I'm going to add in my blueberries. Reserving a few for me to eat because I gotta make sure they're not poison, right? <laughs> I mix them through. on my cake beater are sticking together like crazy, but I really think the, the juice in the blueberries is going to compensate for any liquid that may be missing here. The other thing, you know, I, I did I did cut how much fat I normally put in. Normally I put in a whole half cup of um, cooking oil, and this time I only put in a quarter cup because I upped the dairy and used a fattier dairy. I used the cottage cheese, so we'll see. You have to take in all of these things, all of these things into consideration when when you're baking. balance of things that make the chemical reaction happen. So this is an experiment. This cake's never been made before. You are watching art happen. Or maybe a disaster. We'll see. I hope this isn't a waste of, of materials. That always bums me out when that happens. Every now and then. Usually I usually everything I make is is not just edible but very, very tasty. Every now and then I make a dud. That's the way it goes. I just want to scrape down the sides here and then grease my pan. I'm going to be using a ceramic loaf pan and I'm going to be greasing it with ghee. So I got my ghee here. What is ghee? Ghee is clarified butter. I've talked about clarified butter before. And what is clarified butter? Well, clarified butter is when you take butter and you heat it over a low temperature and until the fat solids separate, which that looks like a, a white foam, curdly foam that, that forms on the top. And you skim that off and then there is like a clear oil that's left. That oil is clarified butter or ghee. And the nice thing about that, about ghee, is of course it's a little bit better for you because you've removed the fat solids, number one. But number two, it keeps a lot longer um, than just plain old butter. And you don't have to keep it in the refrigerator. It's shelf stable. So that's one reason for using it. And you know, it has a slightly different flavor than 
regular butter. It's somehow sweeter to me. All right, so I've greased, greased my pan. And now I'm gonna dump my cake mix into my loaf pan. We got fresh fruit, we got dried fruit, we got vegetables, we got cottage cheese, we got organic eggs. Not supposed to eat raw eggs, but I gotta taste the batter. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. So I'm gonna put it in my oven here um, for about 50 minutes at 350, and then I'm going to test it with, with my knife test and see where we are. And if it is not yet done, I'm then going to turn it down to 300. But there it is. I'll come back and give you an update in, in 50 minutes.